Hello and a warm welcome to The Final Whistle. I'm Kenzie Benali. And I'm Steve Forbes. Well, a disappointing day in the capital as our clash with Brentford ends in a 3-0 defeat. Now, former Saints captain Dean Hammond and NBC's lead soccer writer Joe Prince-Wright are back with us to discuss that one. Joe, we'll come to you first. How would you sum up that Southampton performance today? Very disappointing, Kenzie. I think... um... All of the issues that have been there throughout this season really just were shown in 90 minutes today. Um, Lack of awareness, a lack of sort of tactical focus, I would say. Uh, And all three goals, very similar situations. And it's just been pretty naive mistakes uh, all season long. So that coupled with um, just a lack of energy, it seemed, going into the attack and um, just a lack of Belief, I think, is the, the biggest worry and concern for me today. At least a few weeks ago, there was some momentum after the win at Everton. There was you know, a sign things were getting in the right direction. But today was one of the worst displays of the season. Um, and I just think it was very disjointed. And again, Brentford are clinical, ruthless. We spoke about that before the game. They make the most of those chances when crosses come into the box. They're very smart, very savvy. Um, and yeah, it just was, again, the big moments went against Saints at key moments in the game and conceding those couple of goals in a few minutes just before half time. I mean, that's a killer. I don't know how you really come back from that if you're in great form, let alone the form Saints are in right now. So, uh, yeah, disappointing uh, day. And uh, yeah, as a Saints fan, it's, it's it's really tough to take right now. So I feel sorry for a lot of the Saints fans out there um, because it's 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 been rough. It's been rough. Yeah, it has been a, a difficult time and it was a difficult watch throughout the game, Dean. What were your thoughts on today's match? Very similar to, to Joe. Um, just disappointment, really. Um, especially with the second goal. I think that kind of killed the game, really. Um, and that's, I would say that's probably down to a little bit of inexperience in, in that moment. Um, and I agree with Joe. There seemed to be a lack of energy, really, a lack of urgency with the defending. There were some, to be fair, there were some great blocks um, before Brentford scored. And I was thinking, okay, we're holding on. Could we get to half time then? Maybe make a couple of tactical change, um, like a, a probably kind of per, uh, personnel change, um, bring a bit more pace onto onto the pitch, um, but. Concede one and then concede two, it's very difficult to to overcome that. Is it a hangover maybe from, from midweek in terms of um, physical output, mental output? We've, we've gone out of the cup competition, the disappointment of that maybe. Yeah. But it was just a, a below par performance from, from the players today. It was, it was difficult against a team that are aggressive, that are going to be in your face. They're going to do the basics really, really well. They're going to get a lot of crosses in the box. They're going to counter attack on you uh, at pace, um, real intensity in their play. And they're, they're ruthless, really, Brentford. Um, and they were very, very good um, with that today. But, yeah, just just that that willingness to, to win the first contact, to, to win the header, to stay with a runner, to, to win a tackle. I mean, the second goal was the evidence of that. With Southampton missed two tackles. It can't happen. It really can't happen at this level. Maybe one, the second one, Someone gets past you, you've got to foul them. And that's what I mean with the inexperience. If someone gets past you in that and they're breaking on you, make a, just make a foul. You know, it's an intelligent foul. Slow the game down, stop the game, get a half time at 1 0. Then Southampton maybe come into the game a little bit, change of shape, went to a more traditional 4 4 2. The two new signings came on and did okay and have some experience of the Premier League now, but nothing really changed. I actually thought Theo Walcott came on and did pretty well. Um, he was a bit of a positive off to today, almost scored. But again, it's just not dropping for, for Southampton. But when you're in this position, you have to make your own luck. And you make your own luck by working hard and sticking together. And Southampton were below par today. And that's the, the disappointment. If you lose a game because a team is better than you, you take it on a chin and accept it. But when you haven't quite put the energy in and the commitment that Southampton have of late, then that's the disappointment in my eyes. Well, Brentford did see most of the early chances, but a fantastic opportunity fell to James Ward-Prowse, but he decided to square it to Shea Joe. Um, what did you make of the opening half an hour of the match? Yeah, it was it was pretty even, I'd say, Steve. Uh, Brentford did have those chances, some great blocks, as Dean mentioned, but 
Saints got into some good positions sort of in that attacking third, but it always just seemed to pick the wrong option, like James Ward-Prowse did there. I mean, you can't really criticise him much. He usually picks the right option, but didn't seem like it in that situation. And yeah, Mohamed al Yunusi a few times, the ball would break to him. You'd think he'd have a shot on goal or go centrally and then play a ball out wide and, and give it away. And it was just, there was no cohesion. And uh, yeah, that was a big, big moment in the game, I think, because, you know, we mentioned it before and, and Dean said it rightly, if Brentford concede early, they don't concede at home first often. So all of a sudden they're in a very strange situation. And I think Saints really did need the first goal today to set the tone for this game. And if I'm honest, I don't think they really did enough in that opening uh, 30 minutes or so to, to go ahead. But that was a massive chance, didn't take it. And then obviously we saw how cl clinical Brentford were after that. And um, again, I'll say, I said it at the top, I'll say it again. Today's 90 minutes just kind of summed up the, the struggles of the season so far, uh, just encapsulated all of it quite nicely. Well, let's talk about how clinical Brentford were today, Dean. Uh, they opened the scoring just before halftime through Ben Mee. You spoke about him and praised him before the match. Talk us through that one, please. Well, it just comes down to they just he had more desire to win the ball than than any other player in 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 that moment. It's um, he has a free run in the box. I think it's a a second phase. It comes from a corner, then goes out for a for a throw on. So he's still forward in in the. Uh, in that area of the pitch. Um, it comes from not getting enough pressure on the cross. Um, so Brentford don't do anything fantastic. There's no real overlapping run, no real combinations to, to confuse or outsmart the Southampton players. Again, it's communicating, players going with their man, getting close to the ball, stop the cross. They're the basic things, really. Um, and then... Ben Mee just gets some pace in his run. He's free. So, again, I talk about it a lot. There's no Southampton player making contact with him to try and prevent his run or stutter his run. He's got a free run, which means he can get a good spring on it and he tacks it with pace. It's a fantastic header. Don't get me wrong. He does very, very well. But I think Salasu's body shape, he's a little bit... Uh, he's ball watching. He's not side on. He can't use his arm. So, when, he's jump, when he tries to jump, he can't get any power on his jump to to out jump Ben Mee or compete with him. And I think Perro's in there as well. He just gets out jumped. So Ben Mee just wanted it a little bit more in, in that moment. And, and that was probably an example of the game today. Brentford just wanted it a little bit more, uh, but a fantastic header from, from Ben Mee. And like I said before the game, he's been a brilliant signing for Brentford. Very, very surprised more clubs didn't come in for him because you know exactly what you're going to get from him. He's committed. Um, he's a very, very good defender. He scored a couple of goals this season as well. Um, so, yeah, very, very good header for him. But I just, do you know what? It's not even the defending. It's more pressure on the cross. Do a little bit more. That extra yard, that extra effort, because then the cross doesn't come into the box. Then the header doesn't happen, in my opinion. Well, if we were disappointed with that first goal, Brentford made it two just moments later, Joe, thanks to Brian and Buemo. How did that happen? Well, Steve, again, it was just, sloppy defensive errors and just kind of switching off at a key moment in the game. It was the two kind of missed tackles and then the ball broke. Brentford, a, a counter in, goes wide, great ball into the box. And then and Buemos is there to tap it home pretty much unmarked. And said it before the game, I've been there for their big wins against Man United, Liverpool uh, and others. And when they, when they score, they really go for it, Brentford. They just pile on top and often they'll score two or three, one after the other. And Saints just didn't seem to be ready to to weather that storm just before half time. It's almost like they said, "Well, we'd let in one goal, but Brentford aren't going to go for another. We'll we'll just see this out to half time." But there was again, Dean mentioned it: no urgency, no awareness, and just a bit of naivety. You've got to take the guy down there, take the yellow card, take it on the chin, and just don't concede that second goal because if it's only one nil at half time, you've still got a chance of nicking a point or maybe even coming back to win it, as we've seen Saints do a few times this season. So, yeah. Naivety, slack defending, lack of focus, um, and that will really disappoint the manager, I think, because um, that, that's something that the players need to to manage themselves and manage that situation a lot better. And as we mentioned, Brentford, clinical. The fans were, were going crazy at that point just after the first goal went in. They were buoyant. They're flying. They're nine games unbeaten now in the Premier League. So um, just... A, a comedy of errors really for Saints and uh, you cannot afford to do that when they're in the situation they're in and defensively today really poor 4-3 goals 
Dean, let's talk about our two deadline day signings. They were both introduced at half time. How did they do for you? They did okay. Um, Sulemana had some bright moments, um, looked really, really fast, which is something that Southampton have been missing. So I'm excited about that. Um, was confident in possession when he got into situations where he could take his fullback on, he did. Um, and like I say, he had that turn of pace. He had that one moment in the second half, obviously playing on the left-hand side, where he cuts in and has a strike at goal and forces the keeper to to make a save. So he looked nice and sharp, which is great, because you don't want him to have to take too long to get up to to speed um, and, and settle in. You want him to, to hit the ground running. So he looks an exciting player. And, you know, if you can get him really firing, um, I think he can create chances for Southampton. I think he can he can score goals, but he looks really really powerful. So yeah, he he did okay. I'm I'm sure there's lots more to come from him, and I'm sure he'd be glad to to get his debut um, out of the way. Um, on a the, 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 when the striker came on, he did okay. I think he will need a little bit more time, if I'm honest. Um, Pinnock, I think, dealt with him very very well. Um, competed in in the air and the aerial duels. Um, they had together, I would say, Pinnock came out on top. But one thing that I would be a little bit wary of, that we went a little bit too direct um, when he came on. We looked for that ball every time. I think there was opportunities where even James or Prowse maybe could have had a strike at goal, but he's looking for that big diagonal ball. We used to do it a lot with Ricky Lambert, and it used to be really, really effective. So it can work, and it can, you know, if he, the long ball goes in, you win a knockdown, you've got runners from midfield, may get a strike at goal, may get... Um, another uh, second phase of play so it can be effective but I'd just be wary that we don't go all the time so Van got some good technical players you still want to get the ball to fleet and mix it up so they both did okay um, but they'll need time to, to settle in but they both got attributes that can really help Southampton Joe, I know you just spoke about the disappointment of disappointment, sorry, of Southampton as a defensive unit, but maybe one positive could be Mo Salas, who he made a number of important challenges and a goal line clearance. How did you assess his overall performance? Yeah, th- those p- parts are very good. Steve obviously cleared that shot from Tony off the line in the second half and was throwing his body everywhere, but he just seemed to be kind of fighting the fires on his own back there a lot and just making last ditch efforts. And Dean mentioned it earlier for. Brentford's first goal, I think you'll be really disappointed with the way that Ben Mee was able to get a run on him. It was a great cross. And again, you have to stop that cross and not allow Mbwemo that amount of time to to pick him out. But again, Salas, I think, was just his body position wasn't right. Didn't even really see me coming in. When he did see him, it was too late to make a challenge at that point. So um, again, it's, it's not all on him, these defensive displays, and he's trying his best back there. But I do think we haven't really seen the best of Salasu uh, this season um, compared to maybe even last season when he first really burst onto the scene. So um, I'm not sure. Defensively, there needs to be some rethinking, fine-tuning, get the combination sorted. There's so many players coming in and out, playing centre-back, back three, back four, different full-backs every week. So that doesn't help if you're a defender. I think you don't have any kind of cohesion with the players next to you. It's very difficult to keep chopping and changing like that. So, um, yeah, he did some good things, Steve, but I think he'll be really disappointed. You can kind of see his reaction when Ben Mee came in and scored that first goal. He was pretty disappointed with himself that he didn't spot that run. Well, Saints had a couple of good chances as the game wore on through Theo Walcott and Shea Adams, but then Matthias Jensen just finished the game off. Dean, how disappointing was it to uh, concede again at that stage after starting to finally put on a bit of pressure to Brentford? Yeah, I agree, Kenzie. You know, at that moment with the chance with Theo from from the corner and Brentford blocked it off, off the line, you're thinking, OK, if Southampton could maybe snatch one here, then we could make a a game of it towards the end. Then Theo goes through from a ball over the top, comes out, almost lobs the keeper. The rebound falls to Shea. He has to react very, very quickly with his header and it just goes wide. Again, if you're higher up in a league and you're winning games, one of those goes in um, 100%. And then a sucker punch again. But I I feel as though Brentford were kind of in cruise control second half, really. Uh, They knew that the game was won. Um, and it's a brilliant cross. It, it's a very, very good cross. But again, not enough pressure on the cross. He has too much time to get his head up and look exactly where he wants to put it. It's too comfortable for the Brentford players. 
And then again, Jensen comes in at, at the back post from a, a midfield run and he's just not, he's not spotted by Perro early enough. Now that's either Perro going with the run and coming a little bit more narrow, again, getting contact with him so he doesn't have a free header or communicating with Salasu to allow him to open his body up to, to tell him there's a man coming so he can spot it and he can challenge for it. So it's those, those I'm calling them simple things, but the, the basic things of, of talking to each other, of spotting danger, of being aware that potentially there could be a cross coming in. You're better going narrow, thinking a cross will, will come in, the ball goes back, then you can move out. It, it's kind of the other way at the moment, thinking, well, a cross won't come in. If we win the ball back, then I can counter it quicker. I'm not saying it's lazy, but it's the easier option that we're actually, I'm getting back in position to defend the goal, then I can attack if we win the ball back. So it's the, the simple things that will probably disappoint Nathan, because I'm sure... He's been working on these things with the players since he's been at the football club. I'm sure he's been drilling it into them, but it's difficult. Credit to Brentford. When the ball goes in the box, they their players are committed and they really attack the ball. Um, there's a good structure at their football club there, a good understanding. Um, but Joe made a point then. I think that comes from playing a consistent shape um, and consistent selection, really. Um, and I think the players may be a crying out for that moment. I'd love to see Nathan just pick his best team and go for it for a, for a period of time to try and win games, to get those relationships within the players. I think that may help. Well, let's look ahead to our next game quickly. We've got Wolves at St Mary's in the Premier League on Saturday. Joe, a pretty impressive 3-0 win for them against Liverpool today. What are your early thoughts before that one? Yeah, I mean, not the best time to play Wolves, particularly uh, when they would be full of confidence after that result. But that's been coming for them. Lopetegui, since he's come in, great tactician, defensively very solid, all of his teams. We saw that with Sevilla and the success he had there. So I thought that was a very good appointment when they made it. Um, and yeah, they look like Wolves again, right? I mean, for a while they lost their way, but it's kind of like when they first got promoted back to the Premier League, when they were hard to break down good on the counter, which crosses into the box. And yeah, that's what they did against Liverpool today. So um, I hope, as Dean mentioned there, that in the next week before this game, the new players can be integrated. You can have a settled lineup. And now that they've made all these signings uh, in the January window, they can actually work together on the training ground all week long and know their best lineup. I think that's key for Saints now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is the biggest game of the season by five. You look at the points tally, um, Saints really need to win this. If they, if they beat Wolves, they're only two points behind Wolves and they just stay in that pack of five or six teams at the bottom of the table. I'm not, again, must win. I know Adam Leach, uh, you know, it says it says all of them are must win, but they, this really, really is a huge, huge game. And St. Mary's, it, it needs to be like, it, it just needs to be rocking and to help the team any way they can. And I know there's a lot of unrest towards some of the, you know, tactics, etc. But there needs to be a togetherness throughout the entire club for this game. Try and build a platform. It's almost like a new team, right, of all these new signings. Get them all in there. Get behind the new players. Give them some positivity. And I think, uh, you know, Saints, as long as they can do the basics better, they can get something out of that game against Wolves. But it will not be easy because um, Wolves are, are, are on the upward trajectory. Dean, how are you feeling about taking on Wolves? And do you echo those thoughts from from Joe that it is indeed the biggest game of our season so far? I think it has to be, Kenzie. What is there, 17 games left? Um, I think every game till the end of the season now is is a cup final. I know that's an old saying, but it, it, it's true. Um, Southampton really need to, to improve. And it, it starts against Wolves. You know, you know Wolves are, are coming off a fantastic result. Um, against Liverpool today, they'll be full of confidence. But look, Joe's made a great point. We all have to stick together, and that includes all of us. Um, if we can create a brilliant atmosphere at St Mary's, make it intimidating for the opposition, and then the players play their part. They play on the front foot, they win tackles, they they, they run, um, they show that that commitment, then they can definitely beat Wolves. Because look, we put a, last time we played with uh, home game we played, we put a really good performance in against Newcastle. If we play like that, we have a good chance. Now, a settled team, a week's working with the team on how to beat Wolves, I think is all you can concentrate on. Forget the rest of the games coming up, the 16 after that. Can we beat Wolves? Can we get closer to the group? Because it's, I'm looking at the table now, we're, we're three points from safety. I know West Ham have a game in hand. It's it's nothing. It's not a lot. It really it, it isn't. So Southampton can 
continue that improvement. If you take today away, continue that improvement that we've seen. It, it's there has been some progress. Settle team, real belief from the players, and and try to win a game and enjoy it as well. The only way you're going to win is by enjoying it. But that comes from hard work and sticking together. And these players can do it. We just need the support from all of us. Okay, good stuff. Well, Dean, Joe, thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, the Saints remain rooted to the bottom of the Premier League with a 3-0 defeat away at Brentford. Next up in the league, it is the visit of Wolves to St Mary's on Saturday, the 11th of February. We'll have another Saints live for you then. Until then, take care. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.